Hello everyone, this is uh, Karim Fahmi. I am an Azure Solution Architect. I'm back again and this is uh, episode number three. We are continuing our uh, series uh, for uh, the Architect uh, series, the Azure Architect series. And uh, also just a hint that uh, I think this week or the next coming weeks, I will do uh, two um, uh, episodes uh, per week. Uh, because we have a lot of updates coming from uh, Microsoft Azure and there's a lot of announcements so I need to cover all of them uh, with you. So um, next coming weeks, I mean starting from today, uh, we will do uh, each week two episodes uh, to make it uh, more faster and we can cover uh, a lot of uh, new features from Azure. Okay, so uh, today's episode uh, is the uh, continuing about um, the Microsoft Azure environment. Last time we talked about the virtual networks and this time we're going to talk about the virtual machines, which is the compute part. And a lot of people is waiting for this to see the machines is live and you can connect and stuff like this. Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay, so last time we created our virtual network, which is called VNet. Okay, so a uh, quick brief about the virtual machines. So the virtual machines is actually in the Microsoft data centers is based on Hyper-V. So on Microsoft data centers, they have a lot of racks. They have a lot of data centers everywhere. Uh, we will see them and uh, each rack have a lot of hosts. Okay, and those hosts have the uh, a hypervisor, which is called Hyper-V, and Hyper-V is the uh, virtualization technology that is used by Microsoft. Okay, it was created by Microsoft. Okay, uh, so all the data center there is based on the virtualization technology. It's called Hyper-V, and then when you go to the portal and create a virtual machine, so it creates in the back end a virtual machine uh, on uh, the hosts. Okay. Um, for sure, the, you, you cannot manage the uh, uh, for the people who is the data center experts and stuff like this. I know if they are watching here, you cannot manage to uh, uh, manage the uh, virtual machines and migrate it from here to there to this host. You cannot do this. Okay, this is all managed by Microsoft automatically from the back end. But you can manage the virtual machines, and that's what we are gonna see now. Okay. So let's go back to our uh, portal. So we have a quick briefing uh, here. If you want to create a virtual machine, again, so you have two ways. Otherwise, from the blade here, if you are used to Azure a lot, so it's the easier way, or to go to inside to uh, the resource groups and then your uh, choose your own resource group like this, and then add like this, and choose whatever you want. You have ready-made virtual machines. We will talk a lot about uh, next episodes, maybe in the advanced one. You can create a lot of different stuff. Um, you have uh, Suzy, you have Red Hat, you have a lot of maybe um, a marketplace virtual machines that have already installed stuff. But today we're going to do a very simple demo about virtual machines. So I'm going to create a normal Windows Server machine. So let me choose the Windows Server 2016 data center. So like this and create. Okay. Th this is one way. The other way is to go from the blade here. Just press on virtual machines. Yes, I need this guarded. And then add a new virtual machine and so on. So this is the faster way. And uh, if you use to Azure, so both are right, no problem. Okay, so at the end, you're going to get the same interface. By the way, there is a new interface is being introduced, but it's in preview. Uh, maybe I will announce about it later. I just shared it on LinkedIn, and I might do a video for it to see what's inside the new uh, UI here for creating a new virtual machine. So, <coughs> excuse me. So we're going to create a virtual machine. We name it uh, VM01 and desk type okay so here's the desk type so you can choose different desk types so uh, you have the ssd which is solid state drive and uh, premium and standard i will talk about later and you have hdd with a hard disk drive which is this is the normal one okay and uh, you know the difference for sure between the ssd and hdd 
uh, SSD is more faster, okay, because it doesn't have any mechanical stuff. It's all uh, solid state. I mean, it's electro uh, device, like doesn't have any mechanical uh, movements or stuff like this. But this is the HDD. It's uh, mechanical, let's have a, um, a desk rotating inside and the pin is reading, you know, like the old stuff. Okay, depends on your workload, what you want. Okay, so I'll use the SSD. Um, uh, okay, my username and password, as I saved it. Okay, and here you go. <coughs> For sure, you choose your uh, subscription and your resource group. So I'm going to create my virtual machine in the same resource group that I have my virtual network. And it is the better if you are, again, if you are creating uh, a related workloads together and this is like your environment and you need it together. So you create all the resources in, in one resource group so you can manage it easily. And later we will talk about what's the best way to create your resources and where. Okay. So uh, location west, Europe and... Okay. By the way, the last option, I didn't care about it because if you're a big enterprise, so you get uh, like discounts, so you enable this feature, but I'm not talking about it yet. Okay, so here we come. Now, the next step is choose your size. So we have a lot of sizes here, regardless the, uh, uh, um, the prices because it's different uh, from... Uh, person to another due to the agreement and licensing and stuff like this maybe you have discounts i don't know but it differs from one company to another um due to the agreement with microsoft maybe slight discounts and stuff like this okay so we're not talking about prices now we're talking about technical stuff so you're gonna find in the azure documentation these are the sqs or the types of the machines so the B machine is burstable, okay, and the D machine is the for the general purpose. You're gonna see here the definition of the computing, as you see, you see here. So this is general purpose, this is memory optimized, and again general purpose, memory optimized, uh, storage optimized, and so on. So you're gonna find a lot of different GPUs, <coughs> okay. So for sure, not all gonna be available. Some uh, virtual machines, you should ask Microsoft Open for because you have a lot of computing resources and stuff like this. So some uh, maybe not opened, some uh, like this, I have insufficient quota to use it because I don't have enough credit, so I cannot use them and so on. So it depends, but you can see the whole uh, virtual machines. And again, you can return back to the documentation to know the differences between the series, because this is very important in architecture architect um, and architecting uh, Azure when you are building a solution for your customer or for your company or whatever. Okay. So uh, I'm going to choose my D2 as V3, which is two vCPU of eight gig RAM uh, for data that can be attached. Maximum IOPS is three 200 IOPS means input output okay uh, for the desk the read write uh, speed here um, gonna talk about every detail in the future and the local desk this is the local desk which is the OS desk is 16 gigs and premium yes zones is the availability zones I'm gonna talk about later so I'm gonna press here select and here we come for setting our stuff. Okay, so here in the first, starting from the high availability. So again, take care about this part because we're gonna talk it about uh, in in the future. Okay, so the high availability part here uh, means that if you want to do a highly available uh, uh, workload, like if you have um, um, a cluster of a SQL server or an application that is on cluster or two nodes that should be up and running at the same time, active, active or active standby, whatever you want. So high availability here means that um, the zones that you need to specify for your virtual machines to, um, to be uh, available. Okay. So you can uh, choose uh, how many zones that you want to uh, it to be available in so one zone to three zones okay 
and then you create something called availability sets so availability sets you have two things you have something called fall to fall domains and update domains okay what does this mean okay so fall domains means that you have the virtual machines in the same fall domain share the common power and source physical network switch so that means that uh, when you enable this feature for your uh, virtual machine it means that you will keep your stuff up and running so for example if you have two virtual machines for example on premises and you have your host okay v uh, your hyper-v host and it have two virtual machines on it so this host in your data center it has a power and network connectivity so if anyone just plug out the power plug out the uh, 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 network so all of your uh, machines inside this will be down you cannot do anything so this feature uh, ensures that if you enable this full domain that means that microsoft ensures for you that yes your virtual machines is not on the same host not on the same hyper v host in the back end and you can increase it or decrease it whatever just you have the maximum of three hosts so it would be spread it all over and the same again for the update domains if you have a maintenance during um, Microsoft Azure sometimes and also about maintenance and stuff like this so if you enable the availability sets and you set your update domains so it means that your if there is an, any update for the host or for the machines itself so Microsoft ensures for you that they are not gonna be on the same machine or it will be orchestrated in a manner that you won't be affected at the same time but this means that you have to uh, build your own highly available uh, uh, cluster. Microsoft is not going to do this for you. You have to build your own SQL cluster or whatever application cluster, whatever cluster that you are doing or highly available manner. Then you put it in availability set or you specify the availability set. And again, take care. This is very important because if you didn't this, if you didn't do this from the beginning and you build your virtual machine and you need to enable it it's not possible so take care about this okay so back again i'm not doing this because it's a demo <laughs> okay and storage use in managed tasks okay what is the managed tasks here again so this will be um i will talk about it in the storage uh series later um but we can have a quick so manage this it means that it's 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 being managed by azure and if you did not do this if i said no so it will create a storage account and you will manage the desk yourself and we'll talk about it later okay and then we have the networks here so now here we come you see the virtual networks automatically create i mean it's automatically attaches the vnet one that's why i created the last um demo so as you see you can press here and choose whatever you want so yes i need this my subnet yes default that is being used or if you created another subnets you will find it here from the virtual network this is the public ip okay here we come so it's it tells you okay i'm gonna create a new public ip address so you can connect unless you are connecting through that's gonna talk about it a vpn or point to site or site to site whatever you're gonna do okay but at this time in this demo we're gonna create it like a normal one public ip address i know it's not safe it's not secure to use the public ip address from the first time but it's actually for testing and if you want to connect for your uh, machine just for testing okay but it's not uh, it's not uh, i mean it's not uh, used for production by the way okay unless you have a certain um, needs to make it public but you have to secure by firewall stuff like this and do not put the virtual machine do not put the virtual machine in front of the uh, in front of the network directly you have to put anything in front of it at least you can put the nsgs okay and just in time access we're gonna talk about this the future okay so the key use of the public ip address public ip address um is meant to be a, a, a new resource so it's asking you to create it or choose uh, or, uh, already create or whatever you can choose the name of the ip so I, it's by default like this um okay so i'll make it okay okay i'll keep it like this <clears throat> here we come network security groups that i'm talking about 
what is network security groups um, um, <laughs> sorry for all the people I'm, I'm talking about a lot of topics in a small time but I'm not gonna focus on this so let's keep on track so network security groups is simply in brief it's a, a simple firewall defined by Microsoft to protect your uh, resources okay um, so I'll keep it like a basic I'm gonna talk about this in the future no worries so uh, for sure I, I don't I don't need security groups now so I can connect easily so I, I will disable it okay extensions here we come so what is extensions extensions for example if you are a big company and you have like a certain software or something so Microsoft available for you some extensions you're gonna find it here like Acronis Kaspersky like puppet agent as you see um whatever windows you have extension nvidia so a little more you're gonna find not a lot of extensions and if you have um another extension you need to add it so you can do your own image and put your extension inside it and it will be fine so i'm not going to use any extensions now here's the cool feature that saves a lot of money so enable auto shutdown so if you have uh, for example group of developers or whatever in your company and you need to um, um, people just finish work and uh, they think that it is like the on-premises data center so they keep the machine up and running and it keeps consuming from your credit so we're not gonna do this okay so it's better to use this feature if you are not gonna keep your machine up and running if you are using it like through the day uh, developing or doing some research or whatever uh, and then you uh, don't use it during the night so you enable this and you enable the shutdown time if not so you, you can keep it off okay so I'll enable it put the time put the time zone everything there is a cool feature again so it won't shut down on the people's hand okay it will notify first and will tell them okay there will be shut down okay and here's an email to be sent that virtual machine is going to be shut down <coughs> as you see the subscribe for notification before the virtual machine is shut down so that you can skip or delay the shutdown again this is a cool feature I'm not going to do this because demo here is the boot diagnostics so the boot diagnostics is that you can see like Again, so if you are coming from the uh, data center backgrounds, and again, if you are uh, a new to everything, no problem. But this can be, um, if you are using the uh, KVM in data center, so you can see like a screenshot from the current situation of the virtual machine. So um, it gives you like this or serial console uh, access. <clears throat> All of this can be done here if you enable the uh, boot diagnostics. This is for monitoring stuff. Again, so guest OS is the same, but it goes inside the guest itself. So it's not on the virtual machine level, but it's inside the uh, virtual machine, like going inside the windows and getting a lot of diagnostics. Okay. Here is the storage account that is automatically being created. If I disable this and this, so it will disappear. And I will do this because it's a demo. Then manage services i think this is new i didn't try it really uh, but it seems that you can register with active directory so you can say yes so it will register azure, Di azure active directory if you have one identified i'm not gonna use this and finally the backup here this is one of the latest features that has been added to azure a virtual machine that is cool it wasn't there in uh the past but today it's here so if you enable this you specify where is your vault and stuff like this that you created for the backup it will be another episode for the backup we're gonna talk about it so let's press ok running final validation validation passed loading information okay so you have like this summary before you create it's telling you you know like you are in the supermarket or whatever just after you finish so it gives you like a receipt that before payment this is the things that you uh, gonna have after paying your stuff okay so it tells you basics summary computer name everything if you see something not 
not good or something so you can go back in those steps this is easy okay then <clears throat> you find this small link here download templates and parameters and this is a cool thing so this part is if you're gonna create a lot of virtual machines the same thing if you want to create it with something called arm templates or scripting or whatever so you're gonna use this so if i pressed here download the template and then i have the template you can see the parameters by cli powershell.net ruby whatever this is the arm template people of vsts and uh, devops will relate and understand this is another another topic but it will make it easy for you you can even add it to the library or deploy it whatever just go back and let's create our virtual machine <coughs> okay so you see it starts at 12.03 waiting for the deployment and let's wait here seeing so the virtual machine is being deployed going back to my virtual machines and here's the vm01 as you see the status is creating i'm gonna press here and wait so this is my virtual machine so azure created the uh, basics of the virtual machine settings here but i cannot use it until it finished so creating i'm waiting see <coughs> So there will be, um, I'll be waiting for this virtual machine to finish. Okay, it won't take a lot of time, but just giving you um, some briefing on the blade here. Not going to go in inside any of them. Okay, just cruising all over. So this is the activity log that to see what's happened, who access, who, take, who took action, anything. Access control means to have access, who can access. Uh, uh, defining users groups whatever tagging is gonna be used for uh, in the future for the billing or if you um, are getting the bill in a receipt you want to know you want to know uh, which virtual machines is being used or uh, consuming very so much from the credit so you're gonna find it from the tagging here tag knows and problems for troubleshooting here is the settings uh, tab blade you have a lot of settings configuring your networking desk size of the virtual machine security extensions as you see and so on and here for the operations you're gonna find the shutdown backup disaster recovery inventory a lot of change tracking I didn't state config wow this is new I didn't see it before as I told you every day every maybe every week every two weeks a new features Microsoft is enhancing very fast and here's the monitoring so if you want to see alerts configure alerts metrics diagnostics connection monitoring for your network connection for this virtual machine and here's the last support and troubleshooting resource health boot diagnostics reset and you can reset your um, if you forgot your password when you were creating a virtual machine you can reset it from here and so redeploy that's the uh, options in the blade of the virtual machines and um, continuous delivery okay it's new too i didn't see this identity so a, a lot of uh, different new features um we're gonna cover this in the future we're gonna have a lot of episodes together okay so still deployment succeeded virtual okay this all one let me refresh to see still creating okay <clears throat> so refresh waiting my virtual machine to be up and running Mm -hmm. As you see here, public IP has been represented. 
Okay, so this is the public IP of the virtual machine. So when you're gonna connect, so I'll do copy and put it in my uh, um, remote uh, console to so. Okay, so twelve seven, and we started at twelve zero three. So it took like four minutes to deploy a machine. Wow, this is fast. If you're going to compare this with your own premises, you're going to find a lot of difference. So you open a ticket and ask for uh, your uh, whatever the third line of support or the experts in your company to create for you a virtual machine. And there's approvals and a lot of stuff like this. For sure, this can be done also and in integrated with Azure, the approvals and all of this. But uh, the only difference that uh, maybe with one click, you can do all of this by scripting or whatever. Just it's easy and a friendly interface, okay? So now we're gonna connect here. Okay, port number 339. Pressed here. Yes. Thank you, username. Wow, that's very fast. Okay. That's really fast. <laughs> okay, so it's loading now. And virtual machine open. Okay, that's really cool. So now I'm connected to my uh, virtual machine here, as you see, and everything is okay. It will start configuring for sure. Server manager. Okay. So, okay, so now we have our virtual machine up and running in a, like in a four minutes uh, for creating, it's nothing and you have everything. Okay. So we are done today. Uh, sorry for making this uh, episode some uh, a little bit uh, longer than the others, but it have a lot of information because the computing um, uh, topic is really interesting and it have a lot of information that we need to cover uh, in the next episodes. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed uh, today's um, a video and the next time uh, we're gonna talk about more advanced taking you step by step let's talk about connecting two virtual machines together and how we can connect through uh, different virtual networks we're gonna talk about more virtual networks vnet peering we're gonna talk about the v um, uh, vpn side to side point to side we're gonna talk about um, storage this is another topic so I'm going to take you step by step until you um, understand really how we are going to talk uh, next about the architecture because I'm going to talk a little bit on architecture so you can understand what are the Azure features and what how we can use it. And then I'm going to talk about the concepts of architecture. So how you can architect and how you can think like an architect from uh, a different experience from a lot of people in the market and different patterns, cloud pattern design and a lot of different um, uh, solutions that you can implement in your company, in your uh, whatever, if you are working for a customer, whatever, just for your um, uh, knowledge. Okay, guys, so um, I hope you uh, enjoy this today and um, uh, see you uh, later. Stay tuned and have a nice day. Goodbye.